right, so here we are. <clears throat> I'm doing this new thing where I'm calling a bunch of my uh, friends from the business, ex-bandmates, uh, or people that I've collaborated with and people that I love and I still keep in touch with. And um, today I'm very happy that I have you here with me, Mr. Snowy Shaw. Welcome. Hey there, my good friend. Yeah, so Snowy, you're a multi-instrumentalist, multi-talented, multi multitasking guy. People got to know you as a drummer, but you're so much more than that. And I know that firsthand, I, you know, we were bandmates in Dream Evil many, many years ago. And um, yeah, thanks for doing this, man. Thanks for... Uh, Answering the call. It. It's always nice to talk to you. We might as well record it and, and uh, share it with other people or our bullshit. We talk, uh, you know, gossiping about people. And <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've always I've always enjoyed our conversations, uh, you know, when whether we were on a tour bus or whether, you know, we used to it was in your house or in a, in a cafeteria just talking about yeah, life and I music. I always thought and... you and I had a very good bond. I mean, we like scorpions and, <laughs> and bad yeah. words, uh, this and that, you know, and we share. And, and I'm going to go on record and say this, like you are like from, from the Dream Evil guys and, and, and to clarify, I have nothing against the other guys. I still, you know, I love them. There, there's been no bad blood or anything whatsoever. But uh, out of the, of those days, like from, from, uh, from that lineup of Dream Evil, when I was in the band, uh, you are the only guy that I've kept in touch with. And now I think that's like 15 years. So it is time flies. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I appreciate it whenever I've been back in town in, in Gothenburg, cause I used to live there. Whenever I've been there, you always come down to the shows to say hi to support. And yeah, course, we, we yeah. always, you know, we always call each other and, you know, we, we've kept in touch through the years. So yeah, that's, that's very special, you know? So, um, and so I'm going to start by asking you a little bit, how was 2020 for you, man? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm trying to think. No, nah, but it put halt to all my plans, of course, like for the rest of the world of you musicians and basically for norm, regardless of, of your profession. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it changed everything. Uh, so I put I published this book, you know, my, my autobiography and all that. And I was planning on doing this uh, kind of like more intimate uh, book signing tour when I also play uh, semi-acoustically uh, a couple of songs, talking between the songs and all that. And I was supposed to do that from late May throughout uh, the whole <clears throat> summer in Europe and then in America from late August until, you know, October or something like that. Mm -hmm. But of course, everything got postponed or pushed back or whatever. And uh, then it was... The idea was that I should do that in, now in March, but it's not going to happen. So, so I pretty much can, you know, this year is nothing is going to happen this year. So I'm I'm pretty much going to stay home and record a lot of new music and, and this and that. So yeah, I hear but you. 2020. I mean, it was so and so, and I, the way I look at this year, this is going to be my best year ever. <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of people say, "Oh, this isolation thing," and I say, "Wow, welcome to my reality." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't have any any problems with that, really. You know, no, I mean, working, is it... you know, by yourself doing pretty much everything in your own home studio, working with yourself. You know, as far as long as I remember you from. I don't know, since the day I met you, you, you were always like that, you know, you had your home studio set up and you would record, you would stay up late, you know, until 5 a.m. And, and you would record stuff and like you were just, you know, like a, a, a creative spirit, like the, like nonstop. You just stayed at home and just did your music. You did your thing always. Um, yeah, but I mean, that's why I choose to live in those kind of houses that I have, you know, because I... Uh, you know, kind of lower your standard or, or your expectations on things. I mean, I just want to be able to uh, to create and uh, I don't need to, to be filthy rich or anything like that. I mean, as long as I can be creative and do what I like doing and if I can get by, it, don't have to not have an, any normal day job or anything on the side. I mean, that, that is, hap that is happiness. Basically, you know? That's, ha yeah, that's yeah, happiness. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, so, so, and also, I mean, if you kind of, I try to put myself in a situation where I'm not so dependent on others. I mean, now I've been mixing with Fredman and 
but apart, up until that point, I've recorded everything myself. And then, you know, we're, you know, the album that I'm working on now, now I got to say, it's called This is Heavy Metal, Plain and Simple. And I'm putting out one song per month throughout this whole year. And I also invite a lot of, um, you know, teenage heroes, living legends, mm -hmm. former bandmates and uh, good friends and all that to participate, uh, you know, like sharing the vocals with me or, or doing <clears throat> solos and stuff like that. You ought to know. <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah but but anyway. it's good that you're, we're telling so, people now about it as well. It's good, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah. I don't know when you're going to publish this though, or broadcast or whatever you call that. But uh, yeah, but in, this is in a few be, weeks, so yeah. Yeah, in a few weeks, yeah. But it's it's going to be out now, like in February. So this is yeah. the next song. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, but I mean, uh, apart from that, I'm, I'm doing everything myself. And then I have like some, some you know, guests like you and a, a lot of other people to just, you know, do the stuff at home and send it in. Yeah. And as long as I have good internet, you know, I, I, I might, might as well be based in, uh, you know, Greenland or something. It doesn't matter, you know. I was saying uh, to somebody the other day that, you know, with the internet, like we are able to communicate and like, whereas before it was like the killer of the music business. Now it's, it's the only thing that keeps it alive, you know, so. The music business, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I, pull, I uh, asked about this last night. Have you seen any recent live streams? You know, like people playing live. They started out like in uh, April or something last year doing that and they tried to do cash in or yeah uh, asking people to send them money or yeah, benefits yeah, yeah. And stuff like that but it, it's kind of faded out and died pretty quickly because people realize that to go to concerts uh, it, it's not just the music people say oh i can't fucking wait to to, to get to go to concerts again uh, because i miss that so much is it actually the music you miss or is it a camaraderie hanging out with your friends drinking beer and if you're lucky you get laid <laughs> and, yeah. and, and the whole atmosphere it's the experience. The whole atmosphere and all that yeah, yeah so so the music actually what you hear is just a part of it you know i guess yeah it's the night out i guess like you said yeah it's like we're we're, we're doing this tonight we're going there so you're preparing for an event for an experience and like so yeah the music is part of it that's the that's like the soundtrack of your evening i guess yeah, but basically, I, I've been analyzing, thinking a lot about the whole thing, the whole scenery or, or the, the, the music business in general over the last couple of years. And, and, and the music itself is just a soundtrack to our lives, it is. And, uh, and, and as far as I remember, I mean, to me, like my favorite songs and my favorite albums, they are soundtracks of my life in you know certain songs that i love they are like you know I, it takes me back to a certain time in my life and and that's why it certainly does yeah yes yeah, so that's why all these the, the only thing that, that love... sort of no yeah, go ahead go ahead you can transfer you you know instantly back to to where you first heard it or something yeah. and you remember it just like when you were eight years old or whatever the only thing is like scent. If you smell something, oh, it brings you right back to, you know, wherever it was. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. That's another thing, yeah. Cool, man. So uh, you, you mentioned your book earlier, and thank you for sending me a copy, uh, The Book of Heavy Metal. Yeah, I, I, I gotta tell you, I haven't finished reading it yet, but I, uh, I've read a few chapters already. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it was uh, it's it's great that you you finally were able to put it together. Uh, the the artwork is amazing, the illustration is amazing, the stories are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I got I got to tell you that I was a bit worried that it would be too too bleak and too uh, negative and stuff like that. But people are saying the response overall has been amazing, just flat out amazing. Oh yeah. And uh, reception all over the world, basically. But but they say it's so hilarious to read that and I'm so outspoken, I'm telling the fucking truth. How would it, you know? Yes. I mean- It's not like sugar coated in any way. Not at all, not at all. And the way, like when I was reading, I know you of course for so many years and like I've been reading this and I hear your voice, like when I read this, I hear your voice like narrating this. So I'm like, fuck, this is like so snowy, 100%. And I love it, you know, I love it. I... Yeah, but 
on the other hand, I mean, some people don't like to be uh, put in that position. Like the day after Messiah Markle and he ordered a book and the day after I noticed, oh, he removed me from Facebook and stuff. You know? <laughs> because, <laughs> because apparently he couldn't deal with the truth, you know, you know. Uh, OK, so he was offended. Yeah, but I'm not surprised, though. But <laughs> Okay, I never met Messiah. I don't know what kind of person he is. So um... no, but I mean, the, the thing is that I really like him as a social guy. I mean, to hang out with him, have beers and all that. He's like mm -hmm. a super nice guy. But to work with him, that is by now very, very well documented. Like he got fired from Canamas twice, for yeah, example, yeah. you know, and uh, you should read more about the details in the book there. But but uh, you know, he's hard to work with. Mm -hmm. It's it's very, very hard to try to collaborate or, or, or you know, to work with him, basically. It, I, I, you know, I, I have to say, I have to admit that, you know, I, as soon as I picked up the book, I, I went, I skipped straight to the to the chapter of Dream Evil to just to, to read. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but that's what that's what I mean. That's what he did, too. So he looked for his name and then I said, yeah, but he's just a fat blob, you know, and then he, <laughs> oh, I hate you. <laughs> or whatever, you know. And we, we, you know, not getting the, the the hang of the whole thing, yeah. and just focusing on your own. What did he say about me? You know, yeah. but you got to read the whole thing because I was also praising him because I mean I loved Candlemas. Yeah, they were opening up for King Diamond on a whole European tour. I don't know if they came to Greece though with us. Mm, uh, anyway, maybe. we had some talks also and stuff. Yeah, but anyway, um, your, your friend Mario's been talking about you know visiting them that concert. In, I in think Athens. he he came to that gig. Yeah, yeah. 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 But anyway, um, you know, so so I was like, that's the best band in the world. After the first show, they open up for us in Copenhagen. I said, this is not fair. We should trade places. You should be headlining because you're so fucking amazing. Mm. And Messiah just fucking owns the stage. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I was saying that too. So it's not just negative. But right, I mean, right. If, if I would give you some, uh, some good compliments and then I say one piece of, you know, criticism, uh, you know, if I tell you eight you know thumbs up your things and and the ninth is like oh yeah but your your nose is kind of big you know <laughs> and then you get pissed off about it <laughs> but i was also praising you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no i get it i get I, I i totally see where you're coming from so yeah i mean and in my case at least you know it was uh i i went back to to just read not to see what you said about me or you know where was my name involved it was more about like i wanted to go down that you know memory lane of yeah, the the dream evil years, you know, because because there's a lot of things that I uh, I also don't remember from those days because I was very young. That was like more than 20 years ago. And I wanted to also see like because we've talked about it many times. But, you know, what what were you thinking when we went to Japan? Like, oh, it's interesting to see that. Like, how how did you like back then? Because yeah. everybody like I was I was experiencing. I was experiencing so many things at once, so it was interesting for me to see how it was from from your eyes, you know, the... from my perspective. Yeah, something. yeah, but that's the thing. I mean, the whole th process of writing this book—it's been like a, a catharsis kind of feeling, and that's mm -hmm. the, the reason I did it. When I turned forty, or right after that, I tried to brush it off. It's not it's just a number. Yeah, yeah, but I, there was no avoiding that. Now I'm a fucking middle-aged man, and I had like this midlife crisis, and. Uh, I had like a few options. Should I jump from the bridge or should I go see a shrink, you know, for, for spend all my money for, for a decade or something like that. And then all of a sudden it presented itself like a epiphany or whatever you mm -hmm. call that, that, that I should put down black on white and actually write my story to get to terms with my, I shouldn't say inner demons, but all my, uh, what do you call that? Ruminations and all that. Yeah. Just to, to because I mean, if you, if you keep, rushing forward like i have for for as long as i can remember for 35 years or something like that just onward forward never looking back never stopping to to think about things that's also a thing with the corona and the pandemic and all that now we have this forced pause and people may sit down and, and look around themselves and kind of reevaluate okay mm -hmm. what what am i doing here yeah what is it that i really care for is it you know i've been um out touring so much maybe i should stay home with my kids instead of my wife and my dog and and, and that is what i really appreciate it's it's good to take the time out and uh, reflect on things i think you know and that's what i did with with this book and going through all the emotions like this up and down roller coaster of 
crazy shit that's been going on in, in my life, you know. And uh, yeah, reflecting on, on not everything that we've been through, you know. Oh. You and I together and, and uh, me on the side. I mean, I always work like two or maybe th three bands parallel. So it's been very hectic and trying to make ends meet and, and get by and blah, blah, blah. And it's been very stressful. It's, it's it, good to take time out sometimes. You know? I, I couldn't agree more with you, actually. I, I've, I've been going through this kind of, um, uh, you know, what do you call it? Like thinking about all these things and ref reflecting my life this this past year a whole lot. Like I was in the middle of, I was like right before COVID came out, I was rushing to, you know, I even changed my lineup in, in Firewind because we had to, to kind of like start fresh. I made a new album. I pushed so much the boundaries to get everything out in time. We were, we had a whole world tour planned and then nothing. And honestly, I didn't realize how it, it did me good. It did me good. I, I didn't realize that I have not stopped since I was 19 years old. And like, it was time to kind of like, you know, take it easy now, you know, like you, you're, you're allowed to, to, uh, to spend a week on the couch and like, think of nothing, worry about nothing. Like, you know what I mean? So, so and, and also, I mean, there's no competition because this is global. Everybody's put in the same situation. So it's not like, okay, but they are ahead of me here. No, it's right. for everybody. I know? think that's the, so, that's so we can reflect everybody. on things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I think this, I mean, there's always always two sides uh, to every story, you know. And there's a, also a very good thing about this this pandemic or Corona that people need to sit down and relax and reflect on things. And maybe they realize that I've heard about a lot of divorces lately. By the way, mm -hmm. you know, when when people spend more time together, they realize that fuck. I mean, 50 minutes per day, that's fine. But if I see you more than that, <laughs> I realize that I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i heard yeah, about so, that too yeah yeah uh, yeah. yeah but there are all kinds of different aspects of the, the whole thing there you know and you need to reflect and yeah yeah you know. for me it's been actually really good i really enjoy being at home more with my wife and the cats and everything it's been great so i've really appreciated you know family life a lot more i've always been like that kind of guy you know i had i like you know family and stuff so, but now it was like okay now I've, um, it almost, there's days that I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe I'm not even going to go back on tour when this thing comes back. I like it here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's what you need to ask yourself. Because, I mean, I, I've realized that uh, many years ago, I've been doing my fair share of touring the world and stuff. Absolutely. And But that has never been my main thing. I mean, the main thing for me has always been the creative process of, of creating my little fantasy worlds mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And all the, the aspects like from this design to, to designing with sound or, or painting yeah. with sound or whatever it is. That is what gives me the biggest, most pleasure ever or that's my biggest passion basically. And to be out touring, I mean, it's not that I don't appreciate, you know, playing in front of people and all that, but I always held, uh, had a little bit of, guilty feelings about that because you can hear all the musicians maybe they try to kiss up to their audience or something yeah but the, the thing is to, to meet the audience and stand in front of the, the interaction with the audience and stuff but to me i gotta say that i can sit by myself in my underwear play acoustic guitar and come up with yeah. songs i mean that is what gives me the biggest pleasure well look here's the thing everybody gets different things out of it you know there's guys that are like they their whole life is just living on a bus or in a van and just traveling and you know the, the, the that whole thing and, and they just there's bands that are like literally living for that and and then there's like uh you know other people that are uh you know they're just uh content by creating their you know like you say like they have yeah, their but... own world and then like the show is like it's a part of the whole picture you know it's not the whole picture it's just part of it and and uh and like, I, I, I totally hear what you mean when, cause people ask me, like, do you prefer the stage or the studio? And I say, I could not do with one without, yeah, I can, because like, what would I, if I wasn't able to create, what would I go out there and play and present to the people? You know, um, I mean, you yeah, take that I away, to... I can still create, I can still make music and that, that, you know, feels good, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. But I try to enhance it to people the way I see that, that I, I'm not that, you know, like 
you and I've been writing some good songs together, and I also been doing that with my Slaven. But for the most part, I never had that kind of collaboration that's been very fruitful or or, or creative or something because you've got to be open minded. And I'm not so much <laughs> because I have a very set, you know, like very distinct ideas of what I want and stuff. And that is kind of rare that people can contribute with something, you know. So what am I what am I going at here? I was trying to say, yeah. I kind of lost it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, maybe that's, a, you know, that's your blessing is also your curse, like you're saying, you know, because it is a blessing because you're content, like, uh, you know, kind of like I'll go to the example of Gary Moore, where, you know, he was he was a great singer and he was a great guitar player. Everybody, you know, hails him as a amazing, you know, like what a legendary guitar player, but he could write his own songs. He didn't need outside help from any other singer. He could sing his his own songs. He could produce his own records. And, you know, is that a bad thing? Hell no. I mean, that's very rare, actually, in our days. Um, so it doesn't mean that you have yeah, to co-write with two or three people. People like that, who are like a one-man army or something, automatically get criticized for having a blown-up ego or something like that. I heard this uh, summer talk, like a radio thing in Sweden, when Ingvar Ravstein was uh, interviewed. And he, he told, uh, told his story he, that he got criticized for not... Uh, inviting a lot of people in the, the creative process. And he said, yeah, but to me it is, I am, a, I am a, like a painter, you know, if I paint this, this amazing masterpiece, you know, then you don't want people coming in. Yeah, but you just made a Renaissance, like painting like, like uh, seaside or whatever, and someone, yeah, but I like big boobs and I would paint this girl with <laughs> but it doesn't <laughs> fucking fit in there. <laughs> yeah, do your own painting, do your own song. Yeah, yeah correct, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, I think that that kind of uh, explanation or comparison is, is pretty good. I mean, that's the way I see it too. That means that I'm not so open because I've already figured out all the parts where they should be and where they belong and all that. I so, understand why somebody like that can be misunderstood, you know, in that position. I, I get that, you know, from on, on the outer, you know, when you're on the other side from the public side, I understand that. But uh, um, to me, that's not a bad thing. And that means that the artist knows what he wants and where he goes, where he's going with his art. So, and, uh, every, you know, so, so to each his own, that's what I always said. And that's why I never had problems with, with people like that. Whenever I saw somebody who could write their own songs, produce their own music and Hey, the more they can do more power to them. So, yeah, but I mean, I have no problem. I mean, collaborating with people or being the hired gun. So in the sense And you have done that, all that too. It's not like you cannot. Yeah, but I have. But I mean, yeah. when I was working with King Diamond, for example, I mean, if he wrote a song, he has the veto and, and, and it's up to him. I can be his fucking tool and help him out and sort of enhance and, and get closer to the picture that he wants mm -hmm. with my expertise, of course, because I am a drummer and I... I I'm probably better than him at that, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to make the song gel or, you know, bring out the, the good parts in the song, you know. Um, anyway, so I have no problem with that. I mean, okay, I, I'll be your puppet or your tool. Uh, yeah, just tell me what you want. And I tried my best yeah. to, yeah. you know, please yeah, you basically. It's, a, it's about understanding your role in, in each uh, scenario, like in your band, in the Snowy Show band, Snowy Show, you know, th does, you know, that you are the, you, you know, you have the artistic kind of like direction there and what you want. I gotta when... say, I mean, you you have the same situation with your own solo thing. I mean, there's no, um, um, no misunderstanding of whose who's band it is. And that is uh, a good thing because I mean, I, I, I have a lot of, live musicians or, or or had over the years but it's not like no i don't have any say in anything no did you think so i mean it's my band i mean in the studio i play it all and yeah. you should just repeat basically or or recreate what i do live because i cannot play five instruments at the yeah same. i gotta tell you when i did my first solo record that was like six years ago i think uh because i was up until that time i was just used to being like in a band like you know I, even if firewind is my own band I, it was still like in many ways it was like okay everybody kind of like contributed with things and maybe not necessarily everybody co-wrote stuff but we all kind of like sat down and took decisions and what do you think about the cover and what do you think of this and that and then i go in the studio one day and i make a solo record and like, i remember myself like sitting there in the studio with the engineer and like after finishing a song we just he turns around and looks at me and he's like yeah you're good and I was like, I turn around, I'm looking like, wow, there's nobody else in the room. It's, so I guess, I don't know if it's good enough or if yeah, it's right. shit, but hey, 
we're done. And that was like a, a, such a different feeling, like all of a sudden from being in a band for many years, I was like, wow. So now I can just say, yeah, I'm done with this. Or yeah, we can go to the next song without really needing to ask anybody what they think about it. And it was a liberating feeling in, in a sense, if you know what I mean. It's a, it's a different thing, but for me, I gotta say, I, I've always mentally been, been, not always, but uh, over the years, I, I guess I came back to my true nature, which being uh, like a one man leader, blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know, because you gotta be open-minded and take in other people's suggestions and stuff like that. And it, it sounds so bad, like you're like this egotistical asshole. But that's not how I work because, I mean, if you figure it out, just like you were saying before, it's a blessing and a curse. If you yep. figure out how to play all the instruments, I mean, if I can play the bass myself, it's not like, okay, I bring in a guy who's, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's bass. Yeah, yeah, but I can do that myself. <laughs> What's the big, you know? Yeah. I mean, now when I was mixing, I was telling Frederick that he has a penchant, penchant or whatever you call it, like he favorizes the guitar. And I said, to be honest, I don't give a shit about guitar. I mean, it's like a, it's like a meal or, or making something. All ingredients are just as important to create a good song. Mm -hmm. It's not like I, oh, I, you have to turn up the drums because I like to play the drums. I mean, all the ingredients are just as, uh, as important. I'm only interested in the final result and making a good song. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and if you're in a band, I mean, you have the whole band in the, in the mixing situation and the bass player will say, hey, turn up the bass, I can't hear it. Yeah, maybe you should have chosen a, a, a different uh, instrument then if you want to be the leader, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, man, I, I was never a fan, of, even when I was young, like having too many chefs in the kitchen. Like, you know, no. everybody has to no. have a role in a band. And uh, yeah, yeah. so, yeah. It's uh, sometimes... Paul Stanley. He's the, he, Paul Stanley is one of my favorite guys, uh, the biggest heroes. He, he said that you can be four people in a car, but there's only one behind a steering wheel. Yeah. yeah, you can swap the next day. Someone else can drive. You know, Very but good. yeah, you gotta have a direction. You cannot have four steering wheels and everybody's going to you, you know different directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. correct. And, and that's, that's all true. That's exactly how it is, like in a band. Like there's, there's somebody who has to be the driver, and the others are like the passengers. Yeah. So cool, and man. you gotta have one of them gotta be the fluffer, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've been reading about this thing. What's going on uh, with with Nightwish here? I saw that on social media. Yeah, it's kind of weird because I, I got basically bombarded with mails and messages and stuff like that because after Marco quit the band, I said, okay, too bad he quit, you know? Was, um, Does it sound like charismatic a charismatic guy? I suppose you know, very important uh, guy in the band from 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 day one. I suppose absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden, I got like mails and and on Messenger, and then people started posting on Instagram and all that that I would be the perfect replacement for him. Maybe because they saw me playing, they maybe they didn't see, but they knew I played bass and sang with Jimmy Borger. So uh, and actually, you know, I've been saying that. I, my days as a band member are pretty much over. That doesn't rule out the, the possibility of, of doing a lot of session work for bands and, you know, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Senior, and, 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 that, and that's a, you know, a very big gig, you know, where, you know, you would have a, a you know, like a very kind of like focused, like uh, assigned role there, like in-, in Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and But um, we all got to have that. I mean, when you were with Aussie and all that, I mean, you knew what they expected from you, right? Yeah. Well, my job was to basically show up on time and play guitar and play those songs right. And I never really asked questions about where are we going now? What are we doing? Who, you know, who's doing the album cover? Or who, like, I, you know, it was none of my business. You know, my, my, uh, I was getting yeah, paid to play I, I guitar. I gotta say that a lot of the conflicts that, that was created when I was with Dimmy Borger, uh, I told my wife that, wow, this is a modern day kiss. I'm going to stay in this band until the day I die. And, and I thought the guys were you know, grounded and, and uh, humble and all that. But it all changed when the manager stepped in because mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I don't want to talk too much about that. You can read about it in the book, but but what I read changed about it. is that they were saying, they were saying that um, 
like in in the passing basically like okay you're a you're a session guy mm -hmm. okay fine but i was a session guy for maybe six years or something in therion which meant that i was like fronting the band singing doing interviews writing songs and this and that and when they asked me do you want to be a permanent member okay what's the difference i said uh you have to clean the, the rehearsal room <laughs> okay that was I the only thing <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can skip that part. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you gotta funny, fucking put it in in writing or something, so you know what's expected from you. You know. Yeah. So you don't push the limit. I mean, with Merciful Fate, for example. I mean, I was like young and naive, probably, and thought, okay, like I, I'm a I'm a, an equal member member, and I I'm a, allowed and to con contribute and uh, to write songs and all that. But that wasn't uh, received with open arms, really, because they didn't want to hear about that. What I didn't know back then is that they had a rule from, from you know, uh, from 1980 or something like that, that King writes 40 percent, Hank writes 40 percent of the music and the uh, remaining 20 percent is written by Michael Denner, mm -hmm. while King Diamond writes all the lyrics. I didn't know about that kind of agreement. I just assumed that I was, uh, yeah allowed to contribute with, yeah. with you know yeah. with songwriting in the creative process but basically they just wanted a timekeeper you know <laughs> and and that doesn't work for me you know we, when we were in dream evil i kind of have a tendency of having a lot of ideas or, or yeah, 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 pushing yeah. it i suppose you know yeah man and like i said you know it's like a, every band has different kind of um I don't know rules or sometimes yeah roles rules whatever you want to call it yeah um so and I get it. And then, you know, you might not be the right guy for a certain fit, you know, for a certain group of people. And I get that. That and, is so, um, I got to say that that's so interesting. A lot of people have been speculating about speculating about speculating about putting the, the, the perfect band together, like the super group. It should be Eva Mountain on guitar and it should be Billy Sheehan, Billy Sheehan on yeah, bass. Yeah. And it and should Dion be um, vocals, yeah. <laughs> yeah, blah, 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 this and that. But what they forget, you got to have the chemistry. Yeah. Like in Judas Priest, for example, I, I don't, Ian Hill, I think it's, it is right. Yeah, I, he's the right, per, perfect guy for that job because it's it's Rob Halford and the, the two guitar players. And yeah. he's holding down the fort, the same thing with the drummer. You got to have someone you know, in ACDC and stuff like that too. And and you gotta you gotta know your role. And that's what a lot of people don't don't know. Like bands are like bit it's a business as well, you know. Like of uh, course it so is. so yeah. like there's always uh, you know somebody who's in charge of the business. Usually it's one or two people in the band and the rest are kinda like they, they're like followers of that, you know, and um and, and yeah, and but I, if if you are not by nature a follower, maybe you don't fit into that. Thing. Absolutely, that's what and, I'm saying. So and that, like, I'm talking about myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. For yourself, I, I and I've told you that since years ago. Like I could only see one path for you, going down and doing your solo thing, and doing your your own music. And because you're it such just a... took me a while. Maybe it's like the law of jump that we have in Sweden. You shouldn't think that you're something special or something. So I try to be in bands, but. It doesn't really work because I kind of tend to take over. You know? Well, you tried that and you played with many great bands. And um... yeah, yeah, it's been a very good learning experience yeah. and stuff. But it, and it was a, and it was a big it learning should have been from from the day one. And it was a big learning experience for me hanging out with you guys and with you and writing songs at such a young age. Like I took a lot, you know, leaving Dream Evil. I took a lot from because I, I always kept my eyes and ears open. Like, what does Fredman have to say? What does Snowy have to say about how we write songs? How how do we produce this? Where do we go here in this part? Like, I mean, I was so green to the business as well back then, and 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 but you know, to me, it was all like just trying to absorb as much. So, I, yeah, yeah, but I gotta say that you 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 learned very quickly and and picked up very early on. And Fredman is like. So, so I shouldn't say he's a nice guy and all, I think, but he was so rude in that sense that you came in with all this ambition of being like the, the shredder guy, like that. And he just erased it. Yeah, you get to play three notes. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I don't I originally didn't start out like that. He really wanted me to have my spotlight in there, you know, of course, of course. and I don't I don't think he ever tried to bury me in the mix or anything like that. You know, it was just like, I don't know what it was, but I think we were all to put it to put it nicely, I would say we were all like in different um, 
uh, phases in our lives and everybody was after different things and you remember me like I, w I wanted to take over the world and you were the same way as well you know and we were like yeah but i gotta say we always had that kind of relationship because you and i were so much more ambitious and we yeah. wanted to do this for real yeah and and you fucking moved to sweden and we're sitting out in that stinking uh, suburb or something and the guys don't don't even want to rehearse you know? yeah 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 <laughs> And, and, and I guess maybe that's why you and me have kept in touch all these years, you know, and... Um, I, yeah, I but we both moved on with uh, you with us and me with the Therion and yeah, yeah, uh, Demi and, and Sabaton and all, all kinds of stuff, you know. Absolutely, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, so... Um, cool stuff, man. Well, look, I'm not going to take up much of your time here. It was really nice to, to uh, catch, catch up, up with catch you. Catch up a little bit. Absolutely, man. Good to see you and thank you again for the book and you did a great job with that. And uh, I can't wait to hear your new album. So you'll be putting out one song per month. Yeah, that's the thing. I think, you know, the album, we kind of grew up with that. Uh, you know, oh, it should be a full album, but yeah, album a as a format is pretty dead, I gotta say, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, it, it has a longevity, I think it's called, yeah, for three months or something like that. So it's better to put out more songs and i decided to do that this special thing one song per month in this compilation thing and by christmas i will release um physical double lp with some extra bonus tracks and takeouts and all that you know with the whole thing on it so it's it's kind of good because it keeps it constantly fresh or or something new all the time people can expect okay i i didn't like the previous song but now he's gonna have like another guest star who's who's it gonna be is it the dirk schneider or is it uh jeff tate i don't yeah, know yeah, you know yeah, we'll yeah. see it's a great idea stay in the loop and you'll see you know i fully support it i think it's a great idea and i'll be uh on the lookout for listening to your new music Thank and you. um thanks but again you're done with your new album I'm done. I just finished also. Yeah, I just finished like a new soul. Yeah, record. I read that. Uh, we just, you posted a picture of your cat and you want to relax. Or something. It's uh, you know how it is like you're it's writing. The music is great. It's a euphoric feeling like, oh, I've just made the song. But then recording and like all the details and getting the right takes for me, it's like uh, it takes like the, it takes it sucks out all my all my energy. And then when I, whenever I'm done with it, I'm playing the last note. I'm always like. Oh man, never again. <laughs> yeah, but I totally understand. I mean, what, what I like the most, like I mentioned before, is sitting, to, sort of coming up with the stuff, fantasizing about it, and I see all the different parts, how it should play it to turn yeah. out and all that. And then you, it's like from there on, then you're on, 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 on the top. But from there on, it's kind of downhill when you yeah. should actually realize that and do it and probably, yeah. and then you get into the mix and, and you get a second opinion on that and, and, you know, it's it's for me, it's a fucking struggle. Especially with this album, it's a full instrumental album, so it's the first time I'm attempting to, to make, make an yeah. instrumental. Because I've done, as you know, like I've done collaboration stuff as well in the past, but this time this is like just me, like no guests, no nobody. So it I'm was thinking a... about doing that myself. You should. You know, yeah, it's, it should be called the solo album. It's just drum solo. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-five minutes on drums. <laughs> <laughs> just improvise some bullshit <laughs> but yeah recording a lot of guitar that was uh that was what uh totally uh drained me on this one but i'm excited man um and I, like like you we will be releasing like like um songs singles a, as opposed to just one album and here you go so i totally support this new model i think that's, that's the way yeah, to but go i mean i think it's very very interesting i mean things are changing the whole the whole foundation is changing constantly and you gotta yeah. to keep relevant you gotta update yourself or reevaluate and all that i mean as far as album go maybe i grew up with that and, and i and i kind of like that a lot of my people people in my generation but um with the singles thing i think it go, have gone back to the 60s because back then you put out singles and there was a b-side a flip yep. side of it of the, the the physical yep. single and then you after you released a couple of hit songs or, or, or yeah then you put it on a on a long play like an lp yeah, yeah greatest hits or something and added a couple of songs that you, pe people weren't available previously you know you know so it's it's back to that if you in see sense, what i'm yeah, saying the, the absolutely person, yeah. it comes in circles right so yeah i think we're kind of back to that you're right all right my man have take a, care of yourself have a great saturday night there take it easy yeah you too much love T see ya
Bye -bye. Hugs and kisses and all that. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye.